Hey everyone, I just wanted to share my experience transferring Windows 10 from a SATA SSD to a M2 drive. Uh, I got a Lexar drive on sale and their website has like no SSD cloning software or anything like that. So I found um, this program called Aalme Partition Assistant and you can see in the top left just below the menu it's got migrate OS to SSD but it works between SSDs too. Uh, so I figured I'd just share it with everyone um, for it, for anyone that's been thinking of doing it or planning on doing it so they know what I went through and if you're um, I think for like Samsung and some of the more top-end brands you, they already have cloning software so it's pretty straightforward but if you don't have cloning software this should work with any any brand SSD so what I had to do at first you can see me going through the steps here uh, required to initiate the transfer and I had first I had to get the M2 drive to show up it's disk 3 um, as you can see it's the one with the it's showing that it's full um, but that's just how much space it's going to take up when the OS is transferred over but at first I had to initiate the M2 disk in uh, disk manager so I went to start and typed in uh, it typed in disk and it comes up create and format hard disk partitions and it'll just pop up straight away to initialize it there so once you've done that it should appear in Aalme partition assistant so after that you hit migrate OS to SSD you need to make sure that it doesn't matter if your OS drive is bigger than your new drive as long as the, the space that that is used is less so you know this you can see I've got like a nine nine hundred gig arm um, and the M2 drive is only 476 so I just freed up space on it and you know my, moved over some stuff until I had under 476 gig free once that started it'll you know ask for confirmation and it'll tell you that it'll erase the disk which is the new M2 drive so it should be empty or the new it doesn't matter it could be an SSD or whatever you're using and then it'll reboot into its own like isolated little virtual box and you can see here the transfer is going through now and once that's done it take it took took about an hour to be honest um because i i had my ssd basically filling up the m2 drive completely so if you can empty it more it's better if you've got a backup drive just empty it as much as you can this is mainly just to keep your os intact that you don't have to do a fresh install and go through all the optimization and stuff that you might have done on it uh, and and all your programs so i didn't care too much i just removed a bunch of games so you can see here i had to go through the BIOS and pretty much after that was done I just had to go into the BIOS settings boot options and find UE UEFI hard disk uh, hard disk drive it's called BBS properties here but it could be it depends on your motherboard brand so once you've found that it'll let you switch see so it's got boot option one that's my original SSD with Windows and then boot option two is actually the new M2 drive, the new the new Windows that's been copied over. So I pretty much just set the M2 drive to boot option one, and then I can disable the second one. And essentially now I've got two copies of Windows, one on the old SSD and then one on the new one. And then yeah, that'll boot into Windows, and then I can erase the the old drive. You can see me going through that process here in format hard disks. So once I've done that, uh, yeah, that was that was everything. It worked successfully, it worked fine, and um, and I've just done some tests at the end to compare the stand. Uh, I was on SanDisk SATA Ultra 2s, uh, 900, 960 gig versions, and yeah, now it's a Lexa NM500, which is a DRAMless uh, M2 drive. That's why it was so cheap, but you know, I figured why not because it's so cheap that if it did, if it did fail early I can I can get another SSD in that time because it, it, it'll give me at least a few years hopefully so you can see here the uh, the benchmarks of SS, as SSD and at the top I've done 5, five gig versus 5 gig tests and then I did 1 gig tests and show the uh, first I show the IO internal operations per second and then I've also showed the one gig read and write. And you can see that the, it's actually advertised as 1000 Mbps write, but I think that's under ideal circumstances. Um, I've just been running this drive doing heaps of stuff, so it's actually pretty warm, as you can see here in the first in the first pick with a hardware monitor up. You can see it's up at 54 degrees. 
and the 5 gig test is actually a more of a stress test so that's the kind of speed you can expect if you're doing a long transfer of higher than 5 gig it will throttle and the write speeds obviously throttled compared to the 1 gig the 1 gig tests and um, yeah the, the the boot time as you can see in task manager basically almost got halved so like 40% so yeah I just wanted to share that with you guys and thanks for watching <laughs>